you want to know how freaky deaky went, <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Freaky Deaky and I need to clean this up. So we're going to be doing that at the same time. I realized I probably should have put a towel down first, so we're going to just rewind and fix that first. So I did go clap these out <laughs> on my balcony just to, you know, start the process. I think I'm going to do the docks first because I feel like these ones are going to take... A little bit more time so I have some wipes here and I have um, a wet rag just to kind of start if you're new here welcome to my channel <laughs> I'm Aid I'm a music festival content creator I vlog and blog about going to music festivals and all of that good stuff and we're gonna be talking about freaky deaky this was technically my third time going and I say technically because before Freaky Deaky was called Something Wicked, and then they did like a whole rebrand. Same thing with Something Wonderful became Ubby Dubby. I would say this was my third time going because it's still under the same company and everything. It's just a different name. This year was definitely a favorite of mine. It was a new venue. I had VIP for the first time, so that was cool. I didn't vlog Freaky Deaky. If you guys happen to watch my video about like life update, it was like a mental health update basically. And I had decided that I would not be vlogging Freaky Deaky, which was a very big step for me to admit. I've been vlogging festivals since beyond 2018, well, taking videos of festivals even before then. And so it was a much needed time for me to take a break, you know, just be in the moment and all that stuff. And it was much needed and I didn't know how much I needed it until I got to Freaky Deaky and I was like, whoa, this is like really nice not having any obligations. Like a lot of you guys tell me if this is feels like work sometimes and it really does <laughs> and I hate to say that but that's just how the brand has grown and I'm so grateful for it but even in your real-time job you need to take vacations and you need to take breaks just to like be able to keep going and stuff and I think that is what I needed to do very glad I took the break I really enjoyed the time so since I didn't vlog the festival I still wanted to do like a story time slash review of everything just to kind of give you guys an idea of how the festival went what I thought about it there's definitely some interesting things that happened with it being a new venue oh my god we could totally do like Doc Martin ASMR with this I'm just kidding we can talk all about that if you guys didn't already know I have a blog vibe with a.com that's where it all started it's reviews it's tips it's everything like that I do you have a review of freaky deaky that you can uh, i'll link down below so you can check it out and all that good stuff we'll just kind of dig a little bit into it so this year we went to freaky deaky it was just my boyfriend ryan and then we had met this couple at imagine sav and buddy i had found out that I was gonna have two extra tickets to Freaky Deaky and so I reached out to them just being like, hey, like, do you guys wanna come? Like, we're just looking for like two other people to come with us. Like, all you have to worry about is paying for a hotel, which we can figure out and like get the hotel figured out and everything. And they were like, oh my God, yes, like we'd love to come. So they came with us and they met up with us. Buddy lives in San Antonio. Sav lives in Alabama. Super cool to meet them and get to hang out with them every and everything. And so we all met up basically at the hotel hotel we had booked our hotel pretty late in the game <laughs> just because we were kind of going back and forth on if we were going to go to freaky deaky not go to freaky deaky and then we finally made the decision to go and then a lot of the major hotels closer to the venue were already sold out because it's in baytown which if you look at the map of baytown i'll put a screenshot up here it's on the other side of Houston. It's in a very small area and there's not much around the venue. So you kind of have to go like next to the neighboring like cities, I guess. And so it was crazy when we were driving like to and from the venue and we were passing by all these hotels and to think that all of them were sold out that weekend. Like that's just how many people were going. I don't know what the official numbers are on like how many people actually went. It was a lot of people. <laughs> Our hotel was about a 20 to 30 minute drive from the venue and we decided that we would be driving just because we know with ride shares and Ubers, Lyfts, all that stuff can get pretty pricey and I'll talk about what happened with that. So we decided that we would drive to and from the venue. Parking was about $20, which is pretty reasonable, I think and splitting it between four people isn't bad. We drove down on that Saturday and then it was a little frantic cause like Sav had gotten in but her boyfriend like was driving separately. 
And then we had to like get ready and Walker and Royce were at like, they're out like 4.30 to like 5.25 or something like that. And so we get ready, we're like cutting it pretty close, which is fine, like I've seen them both, but it was them back to back. So I was like pretty excited for that. On the way there, it is a very narrow road to get there and traffic was so backed up for it you guys oh my god it was so backed up but we were just like whatever like it's gonna be fine like we'll get there in time we stopped by a gas station grabbed more alcohol drank in the car for a little bit and then we were like okay it's time to go i was feeling a little bit anxious just because first day jitters but then also like i really wanted to see that back to back luckily thanks to having vip tickets we were able to go through security pretty quickly like security took like maybe less than five minutes Will call didn't take long for us to get our tickets. So it all really worked out well and we could see the last 15 minutes of Walker and Royce. But I was a little bit disappointed by the back to back. I don't know, maybe some of you that saw it earlier can let me know how it was, but it looked like it was literally just like Walker and Royce would play a song and then Sheba song would play a song. So it's not really like a collaborative back to back, I guess is like what I'm thinking. I mean, I only saw the end of the, the last 15 minutes. Decided to like get food, get drinks, kind of just like get situated, get to the venue layout check everything out get pictures because the Sun was starting to set the venue is very interesting so the venue definitely is pretty big pretty spacious my issue with the venue is the way that the stages were laid out the sound played you guys <laughs> was awful, awful. <laughs> because the way that the map is laid out and I didn't know why I didn't think about this before maybe because I didn't think that all the stages would be pointing into each other but that's how it was if I was at the house stage I could hear the base stage and main, main stage if I was at main stage I could sometimes hear the base stage and like vice versa it was just not good <laughs> basically <laughs> So I know we probably could have fixed this just by like standing a little bit closer, but honestly, it was like such a weird dynamic at the big top stage. Like if you stood like a little bit closer in, then it was super loud. You went to the right, there was like these shipping containers that the sound was basically bouncing off of, which like keeps the sound in, but it was like super loud. So we stood to the left of those shipping containers, kind of to the back because of our ears, we had to make that sacrifice for your ears and hear the sound bleed coming from the base stage so i know i'm complaining about it but i know this wasn't just a me problem like i know a lot of other people had this complaint and if you're in the back kind of person like i am like that's important because we're protecting our ears <laughs> i'm gonna probably have to soak these but i'm at least getting the initial dirt off and then we can like take a rag and soak them and whatnot That was my only complaint really with the venue was soundly, but it is a really cool space and was like very spacious and whatnot. After that, we saw Fisher, which I hate to break it to you guys, but I'm no longer a Fisher stan, unfortunately, breaking news. Nothing went wrong with his set, nothing wrong with his music. He just posted on social media a very like womanizing, misogynistic video of these women that work at the, I believe it was where he had his after party at Clay is what it's called, Houston. And it was after the show was over and there's all these women just like cleaning and they're in these like risque outfits. And cause that's like a part of the job basically. And he was zooming into them while they were bending over cleaning and like saying very inappropriate things. And it just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't wanna be supporting someone like that. Like no matter how good his music is, I just cannot stand behind that kind of stuff. And he did have a really good set. We got to watch it from VIP. The view in VIP is really, was really awesome. I'll put a clip here of all that. in VIP were also amazing. We didn't, I never didn't have to wait more than like five minutes, I think for a bathroom, like less than five minutes, honestly. They had like four, so they had two VIP sections, one near the base stage, one near the main stage. 
One section was one had four VIP trailers, the other had two. I remember texting Emma Capotis and I was like, they have four trailers for the bathrooms. Like Imagine could never, because Imagine had two trailers basically by the bathrooms and the wait times were so freaking long for that that was super cool there's also like food and vendors and stuff like that in vip um that you could check out too we really only went there for the bathrooms and then sometimes the viewing areas like the view it's just really hard to be in those viewing areas because it's really loud even when you have earplugs <laughs> Earplugs. Aren't I a great sound earplugs ambassador, you guys? Yeah, so I didn't have earplugs, so I was just kind of like, well, I can't really stand here. We really only used VIP for the bathrooms and the viewing decks, but even then, I think a VIP ticket was like $250 at one of the tiers, and I think that is a very much worth it. I think that was at the first tier. That's what someone told me, but like, I would definitely pay VIP for that. We didn't have to worry about going to the porta potties, and like, with how muddy it was, I haven't talked about that yet. It was freaking muddy. At the porta potties, by the food, by the water station, it was muddy everywhere. It was so funny. Disco Donnie talked about how like, it's better this year and everything, which I agree. I think it was a lot better this year. You could at least be at stages and not have to worry about the mud. Like last year was really bad at some of the stages, but it was still pretty bad. And it was so funny because the next day he tweeted, he was like, well, the grass was fine. The ground was fine until you guys started walking on it. <laughs> and it was like, everything was fine until a bunch of people started walking, which I thought was really funny. But yeah, they ended up putting a bunch of hay the next day, which I think definitely helped, but obviously not enough. As we can see my shoes here, which is fine. We're fine. <laughs> Give me something to do. So yeah, the VIP bathrooms were also clutch because like we didn't have to deal with the mud like there was with the porta potties. Big yikes on that. Yeah, let's see who else did we see. We saw Space Jesus. We saw Mala. <laughs> favorite set because I was just we were bouncing around so much that like I don't I can't really say like oh this set was my favorite you know because we didn't see really a full set I saw a little bit of Yodo I definitely I told Ryan I was like we have to go see Yodo the next time he comes to Austin because like I didn't see the full set <laughs> myself and I got kind of FOMO not being with the group because we were with like Lena and her boyfriend and like other friends that we had met and stuff so I really felt like I went back to the group and then we saw lane 8 to end the night decided to leave early at about 11 15. we were all pretty tired you know like having to drive in the same day and then go to a festival is just a lot and so we decided to call it because we knew that we wanted to come earlier so we didn't have to deal with traffic so we were like we should just like call it now and leave and we made the right choice obviously <laughs> we had gotten parked in a very far corner and it ended up working out because there was like multiple lines to get out of and we were going to be in the line that wasn't as busy so that worked out pretty well we left at like 11 15 it was pretty much like a five to ten minute walk probably a ten minute walk just to get back to our car we didn't have to wait on any traffic to leave and we were home probably by midnight and passed out by 12 30. we lucked out and then the next morning i woke up to twitter and people were just going off on like disco donnie on like everything life honestly people were having mental breakdowns <laughs> because what happened was i guess disco donnie said that the traffic flow was not done properly or whatever the word i'm trying to say here it was not executed the way it should have been so that caused a lot of traffic issues but also because the houston astros were like in are in the world series or whatever sports <laughs> 
not my forte here you guys but because of that that was causing a lot of ubers and lifts to not be available by the time that the festival was over so surge pricing was in full effect i had a friend pay 150 dollars to get back to his hotel heard some people were just hitchhiking waving down cars offering them cash which is terrifying to me like that's just so not safe people were just trying to hop into other cars i heard some people just went to the after party on site just so they could like wait it out and hopefully get a ride. I heard people walked miles and yeah, which I'm sorry if that was one of you guys. I know I shouldn't be apologizing. It's not my festival, but like I know how shitty that can be and you're just wanting to get home and not having a reliable way to get home and it's scary and you just like don't feel safe. Like I just could not imagine. All a learning lesson. This is all things that come with a new venue and you know like when you sign on to a new venue, that's not something that you should like be worried about or be aware of, but it kind of is sometimes because you know things don't go according to plan like Disco Donnie talked about like the officers that he gave instructions to were not following them. It was just a mess and there's only so much planning and things you can do. And then when it actually like executes, like things are not always gonna go to plan. That's just my two cents on that. And I know Disco Donnie, he really like heard all of your guys' like feedback and complaints and everything. And then the next day he got shuttles for everyone. So like, like I talked about, there was like major areas with a bun bunch of hotels near them. He arranged shuttles for people to be picked up from freaky or from freaky deaky and taken to like those major areas where maybe if the, your hotel wasn't in that area but was close by you at least were out of the area so you can get an uber and a lift because i heard service wasn't that great service was pretty okay in the grounds but i know like when i was trying to just go to like social media or like try and request an uber and a lift like my service was pretty rough outside of the festival so i know that might have been the case for some of you guys hopefully next year like they had a shuttle service like they kind of do for a magic I think that would work out really well. So that could be something that comes out of this as we were all the guinea pigs, which I know it sucks. It's a vibe killer. You pay all this money to go to these festivals and whatnot, but you know, what's happened is done is done. And I think Disco Donnie and the team and everyone urge you guys and things will be changed for next year if they decide to use this venue again. Cause it is a really good venue. I think they just need to have better planning for the area and stuff. And then figure out the layout situation with Soundbleed. Cause otherwise, like experience wise like they had a ton of cool stuff this year like they had a haunted house maze looking thing we didn't really go in that because you had to wait in a line and we just like didn't feel like waiting in line but if you guys like that let me know i don't even know what was in it so hopefully it was cool these are pretty much done for right now i'm probably just gonna like let the bottom soak just to get the remaining mud out but otherwise i'm pretty content with this <laughs> i'll probably like just um, wash these out, like hand wash them and whatnot to clean those. Now these babies. So I just got these, you guys, and I could have not worn them. I shouldn't have worn them, but for the fit, this is what I wore. It went with the fit. So you know what? We did it. We tried it. Now we're going to clean it. And I'm, for these ones, I'm probably going to go out and get like a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser just to help the bottom here and salvage what I can from it. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes, but... Yeah, it just wipes right off. Wow, that is so satisfying. So yeah, they also had like candy making area. They had like that celebrate safe thing that I was talking about. They had like these acro jumper people that like jumped on trampolines. I got a video during Rez's set that was super cool. tattoo apparently a guy came up to us he was like hey like you get a tattoo and i thought like he was giving us like a coupon or like a card for like outside of the festival and i was like oh like i'm not gonna go all the way to like a tattoo parlor after this or something i don't know that's kind of weird and then <laughs> i saw this girl on twitter get like she had a lip like one of those lip tattoos I forgot what it said, but I was like, oh my God, they really were giving out literal tattoos. Like, what the fuck? That's so crazy. Like, could you imagine going to that festival and then just like getting that? I'm wondering if I should take out these two. I probably should. Oh, that's gonna be so, such a bitch to relace. So yeah, I thought that was super cool. Um, one thing I thought was interesting 
was they didn't have anybody like doing the water refill stations. You could just walk up and do them yourself. And I didn't have to wait in a super crazy line like I did for Ubby Dubby. So I'm wondering if like not having people to help you with the water makes it go by faster in a way. I don't know. I thought it was so strange. I was like, there's no line. And like everyone just kind of like was doing it themselves and like was very efficient. So I thought that was pretty interesting to see. Hopefully that's like a permanent thing. I don't know. I mean, it is cool to have volunteers and stuff, but if it makes it quicker for you to not have wait times for a water station, pretty ideal. Food, like I talked about spicy pie. We had spicy pie all weekend. I couldn't not like had to get my fix in case they're not gonna be at Forest next year. Spicy pie was amazing. The lemonade was amazing. You guys, we put lemonade in my vibration pack and it changed the freaking game. It was so good. Oh my God, amazing. Okay, I had paused you guys because I wanted to check the camera battery. We're doing okay so far, I might have to switch it out. But I unlaced these just to make it easier or else I would have to like get in the tiny little crevices to like clean it. And then I'm probably gonna do the same with those laces and just hand wash them and then relace them back up. I'm gonna be wearing these to seismic, so we'll have to get them re-ready all over again. I'm really happy with how this is cleaning up. It makes me feel a lot better about wearing them. I probably shouldn't have, but you know, we killed the fit. The fit looked great. I did get a scuff mark, but I think I got the scuff Scuff mark before. Cool. Day two, we decided to go there early just to avoid the traffic that we had experienced on day one, just cause we wanted to, you know, get there, not have to deal with it. So we got there in time for Vanessa's set. Uh, we saw Vanessa at Dirty Bird Camp Out, wanted to see her again. That's where pretty similar. She's awesome. If you guys have a chance to go see her, I highly, highly, highly recommend. She's definitely on the come up. And we love female artists. We love supporting them. So definitely would go check her out if you guys ever get a chance to see her and then who else did we see after that i think we did like another little food break kind of like snack break we saw oh we got merch so savannah got the btsm jersey which looked super dope and then they had a freaky deaky patch which i talked about this video like forever ago but i was going to do like a diy festival jacket and I've been collecting patches from the festivals I've been going to and so they had a freaky deaky one which I thought was awesome. Dirty Bird Campout didn't have one which I was, oh Dirty Bird Campout did. There was another festival that didn't have one. Alala didn't. Forest hasn't had any patches which is really annoying so if someone wants to make me a forest patch or tell me where I can get a forest patch made that would be dope. I was at the house stage for the most part. Favorite set from day two was Russian style. Oh. It was Phlegmatic Dogs back-to-back Volok. -back that set was so hype. And we saw a ton of my friends from Austin because there was like a huge shuffle meetup and it was sick as fuck. circle Ryan got in the shuffle circle we danced outside of the shuffle circle it was a pretty big shuffle circle and having that many eyes on me literally terrifies me so we shuffled outside of it <laughs> a little bit of closey and then we saw Dombreski who was awesome we all know I love Dombreski <laughs> Slater. We did hop over to Kill the Noise and BTSM for a little bit just to like switch it up. Go, go, go. I 
did see a little bit of Armin Van Buren because Ryan had never seen him. I felt like it was just like one of those things you gotta check off the bucket list, you know? Like I've seen him at EDC before. <laughs> Green Velvet, we saw Martin Garrix, which was like all the feels, seeing like, you know, hearing that big room, progressive house, like beat, all that stuff. Ugh, love that. Where the fuck is that Let me know what your guys' favorite sets were. Like I said, I was bouncing all around, but like I really did love Russian style. That was the only full set I saw all weekend. So that's why I'm saying it's my favorite set because like that was just such a good high energy, like such a good set. Like I'm not just saying that because we were at the shuffle circle. Like literally you guys, if you have a chance to go see it, like go see it because it was so good. I did have some pros and some cons in my blog post. So if you guys are interested, pros, the music, the crowd, I always love my Texas fam. They are literally the best people. So sweet. Like I had this realization when we were driving back, like, you know, being two years now living in Texas, Freaky Deaky was like one of the first festivals I went to in Texas. And like, I didn't know anyone. And so like to go from like not knowing a soul moving to Texas, and then to have the community and the people and the friends that I have now like I just get so emotional thinking about it Like I'm so grateful and like having Ryan and having like all these people It's just like I feel so blessed honestly and fortunate that I've been able to make this place my home and you know Found people that make it feel like home and I could go on and on we're all in our feels now. <laughs> I just walked away from that festival being super happy. All the Vibe Tribe members I met, y'all are amazing. You guys were so sweet because you would just like, not only ask me like, oh, hi, how are you? But like, you would be like, oh, how are you really doing? Like, are you like enjoying your break? And that just means a lot to me that you guys are like, I guess paying attention to my life really, or that you like care more to know more rather than like just the surface level things. And you guys actually like want to have a conversation with me and want to like make sure I'm doing okay and like I love meeting you guys so thanks to anyone that said hi y'all are the best pros VIP was definitely a pro that was so clutch security was really good pawns the whole traffic situation was not ideal for a lot of people. Logistical planning in terms of just like the layout, the sound bleed was really bad. So hopefully that gets fixed next year. I know there's probably a reason for all the stages to be facing each other, but like, come on. That was a little ridiculous. I don't think I had any other cons besides those ones. Like I said, I'll link the blog post down below. It kind of breaks it down a lot more of like cost of everything. We didn't really spend too much because luckily I had free tickets. So that worked out really nicely for us. So thank you to anyone that used my code. Oh, I did also get some questions on Instagram. So I will pull those up right now. So some of the questions I got <laughs> was the sound bleed between stages as bad as last year. Yeah, I think it was even worse than last year. Maybe that's just a Disco Donnie thing that they'll never get figured out. <laughs> Unless it's like the layout of Ubby Dubby where like, Ubby Dubby's layout was really good cause that was really spaced out. So I don't know if it'll ever get fixed. I don't know how I'm gonna fix this. I think I'm gonna need to soak these a little bit in like some hot water, but we're so close. They're looking a lot better. So we'll just put these over there. Is it worth traveling for from out of state? This was from Emma. <laughs> Emma, it is if you come visit me, sis, just call her out. <laughs> I think it's pretty worth it, honestly. It's Texas rave scene's pretty fun. After parties I hear are pretty lit. We didn't go to any because we're old. But yeah, I think it'd be pretty much worth it if they fix some of these things. It's definitely becoming like a top tier festival to attend for Halloween, I believe. It's not like on escape level by any means, but I think it'd be pretty worth it to travel to. I'm also just selfish because I want Emma to come visit me so we can hang out more because I miss her. So I'm probably just gonna peer pressure her to come next year. <laughs> How did you like the visuals this year from last year, the stage set? up which was your fave oh i didn't really talk about this like actual production of the stages and stuff i really like this year's i really felt like last year's main stage looked kind of cheesy but that's just me but like to this year's it felt like okay hi we're like a legit festival like take us seriously i don't know 
That's just how I felt about the stages. They just all were really good. I felt like the house stage at Ubby Dubby seemed to be bigger to me than the house stage at Freaky Deaky, which is fine, but you know, can always give the house stage a little bit more love. Yeah, I really like the production this year. Really top notch, lighting, visuals, all that good stuff, I feel like was pretty top tier. Good job on that, Disco Donny. Best set from each day. So like I said, didn't have one for day one, but day two. Russian style. How does it compare to other f Halloween fests like Escape? So I've never been to Escape. I would like to go to Escape one day if it ever like made sense to. That's another thing is that it's hard with these Halloween festivals to think about traveling out of state from actually now that I'm thinking about it because they're two day festivals and to kind of make your trip worth it, I feel like like having a three day fest would be ideal. But since Escape is two days, Freaky Deaky is two days, I don't know, would be, I think, more worth it if the festival was longer, just to make your trip more worth it. But you could also find other things to do. Like if Emma were to come visit me, <laughs> She could come hang out in Austin for a day on Friday and then we would drive up to Houston on that Saturday and whatnot. Also next year is going to be, it's going to be on Halloween. Like all of the Halloween festivals are gonna be on Halloween, which will be really cool and exciting. That's for sure. From the level I've seen from Escape, I mean, it's an insomniac festival. So that is like top tier, like cannot get any better than that. So I can't really say like that Freaky Deaky is better than Escape just because I know the level that insomniac festivals are at but i will say for being like in texas and everything i think freaky deaky is definitely holding it down and they're growing every year and i think it's only going to go up from here and kind of be able to compete with that escape level quality and whatnot you know they're still learning they're still growing but despite some of the issues it was still a very well put together event would you recommend to someone going next year? Yes, I would. I think it's always fun. Texas crowd is fun. I've been going for it since 2017, obviously. And that's just not, that's not just because of the free tickets. It does have a special place in my heart. And I think the community is what it's all about. Texas fan really is some of my favorite people I've ever met. Everyone's just super nice and super friendly. And I think after going to some of the, Going to a certain festival where I was disappointed by the crowd, Dirty Bird Camp Out. Going to, going to a festival like Freaky Deaky with the crowd and everything was just very much what I needed to meet so many kind people there. What are the main genres of artists? So on main stage, they had a lot of house on the day one on the main stage. I was pretty happy about that. And then they had Rez as the headliner. There's a bass stage, that's the Crypt. There's Big Top, which is like the house stage. They have um, the Rising, which is like for up and coming people. And then they added a stage, I think Haunted Hollows is what it's called. And that stage was like all over the place, basically. There was like drum and bass, there was hard style. There's trance, I think too. So that stage was kind of like all over the place, but I think it played to a lot of people that do have other music tastes, which I think is super awesome. There's House, there was Techno. We had Armin and Martin Garrix, which are huge, huge names to have on that stage, on the main stage. So I thought that was super awesome. There was Steve Aoki, Dioro. So it's very like diverse. And that's what I like about Disco Donnie events is that they're always diverse lineups. So they really do like take into account what people like and stuff. And so there's a little bit of everything for everyone. One. And even if you live at the house stage all weekend, at least you're gonna be having a good time, you know? But we we like a lot of different genres, me and Ryan, so we like to bounce around a lot and just listen to whatever sounds good at the time. Do people's costumes get in the way of your vibe, like wings, bulky suits? I didn't really notice that. I've never really noticed that. I, if you know me, I hang towards the back anyway. So I didn't really like ever feel like people's costumes got in the way, people's totems got in the way or anything. That is something like interesting to think about. So I wonder if anyone was up close, if you like had that experience where someone was like getting in the way because they had large wings or their costume or whatever. Let me know. Cause that's like some proper etiquette, I guess, to think about like, if you're gonna have like that big of a costume, like you better be cautious of the people around you in their space. That's very interesting. Wow, she's looking a whole lot better, you guys. It's like it never happened except for the bottom. <laughs> So yeah, I think I'm gonna just soak these and hope for the best along with the other ones. So I was able to clean up a lot of the mud spatter, but you guys, look, this was all muddy and it's like as if it's like brand new. I'm so shocked by this. It just looks so freaking good. Let me just take my sponge. Like it's just coming right off. Ugh. 
We love it. You guys, look. It worked. They look so good. It looks so brand new. Uh -huh. All right, let's wrap this up. I wanna hear about parking. Also, how was not vlogging? Will you do, do VIP again? So parking was not bad, like I said, because we left early. On the last night, we left at like, um, I think it ended at 10. So we left at like 9.30, 9.45 and like didn't have any issues again. I honestly think parking would be the move if you have someone that's willing to DD you guys. So you don't have to worry about ride or lift or anything like that. Like I said, parking was $20. That was another thing. I heard the people that did premium parking got gypped pretty bad just because like they waited two hours just to get out of the parking lot. I think if you were to go to Freaky Deaky, you should definitely drive, leave a couple minutes early. Don't stay for the full set. I know it's like super hard to not stay for the full set, but if you'd rather like not be in a parking lot for two hours, then like you should leave a little bit early. How was not vlogging? It was great. I'm not permanently saying no to vlogging at festivals. I'm just gonna be more cautious about it and take more breaks for certain festivals, but I will be vlogging seismic. I will be vlogging lights all night. But yeah, I was really happy to have a break, just be in the moment not worry about content will you do vip again honestly i would definitely do vip again it was very much worth it i heard it was a serious upgrade this year for the people that did vip so i was pretty happy that we did that how are the upgrade from last year's freaky deaky stages art installations i think they definitely kicked it up a notch and it was super super dope this year i'm excited to see what they do next year how they improve whatnot if you guys like this video ubby dubby is coming up next they did announce i think on monday or tuesday they're announcing the lineup are they're announcing the lineup on Monday some of the artists and then Tuesday is when tickets drop can use buy with aid on your tickets I'm currently getting set up with that I don't know if it's gonna be ready for the on sale but if you try buy with aid you might get a discount on your ticket I love you guys so so much thank you for all the support if you did like this video do give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button to join the vibe tribe I love you guys so so much and I will see you in the next one bye